What is going down guys? My name is Tetra Ninja and today we're playing a game that you guys probably heard about. I don't know, it used to be pretty big back in the day. It's called Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you guys. But in all seriousness, this game is about four months old, I think. And Modern Warfare 2 actually hasn't been popped into my Xbox since I think a month before Halo Reach came out. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of my passion for this game right now and I know I, I know I say this a lot where I'll tell you guys that I'm not, I'll post whatever I want to post and I really don't care what you guys think but that's all in just real fun I know for a fact that most of my subscribers I've ha gotten so far have been due to the fact that I play Call of Duty and I respect that fact so I do I do plan to post more videos in the near future so don't worry about that and a lot of you guys are probably wondering right now overall why there's no video layout, my normal layout that shows you my classes, etc. Perks, kill streaks, and the reason for that is I'm actually testing out some new render setting settings, so I want to see what they look like on a full screen. And I know the render settings I had, from what I've been told, are pretty good already, the ones I was using before. But you can always do better, and I kind of want to perfect it before Black Ops came out, so it would, my videos would look as sexy as possible. So that's the reasoning for that, even though I'm probably still going still to get questions, even though I explained it in the comment box, but whatevs. And uh, like I said, I haven't posted a Modern Warfare 2 video for a while, and the reason for that is I just have nothing to talk about. <laughs> this game's been out so long, there's really no tips I can give you <laughs> that I haven't already said, or hasn't been already said like a thousand times in this community. But, uh, so yeah, I only post videos on Modern Warfare 2 if I have a topic to talk about and lucky for you guys I have one today and it is about Infinity Ward and it's Community Manager 402 or some of you guys may know him as Robert, Robert Bowling and so it's a general consensus online that once Black Ops comes out that this game's gonna basically go the way of the dinosaurs or, or, or the dodo bird and if you hear panting behind me because Toby is licking me right now. <laughs> but yeah, so once Black Ops comes out, then it's just everyone knows that no one's gonna put you you no one in your friends list will be playing this game basically. Just because a lot of faults in it, a lot of things are broken, the one man army, new to the commando, the painkiller, etc. etc. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I I I know this isn't a bitch video actually. I'm actually going to defend Infinity Ward and Robert Bowling, <laughs> so, which I don't think that many people in this community will do. So a lot of you guys blame Infinity Ward for not kind of taking care of their game after it was released or shortly after it was re released, but I know a lot of you guys probably know about the whole the Infinity Ward turmoil with Activision and everything, but in the middle of all that you have to realize that Infinity Ward lost half their top programmers when their uh their basically their leaders Finn Sampella and his partner left and formed Respawn Entertainment. Well they didn't left, they were fired basically. <laughs> and after that just slowly more members of Infinity Ward left and you can't really work on patches and when you only have half your staff. <laughs> so there's a reason right there. And as well like when you make patches, you can't. A, a developer just can't say, "Oh, okay, we need to patch this. Let's do it. It's out the next day." There is actually a bureaucratic red tape that has to go around it. First of all, that that has to be approved by the publisher, which was Activision, and then that actually has to be approved by the whatever console you're playing on. So either PC, Xbox Live, or PSN. So for the first part is getting it passed in Activision at this time. So if they're going through a whole worker strike in the middle with Infinity Ward, how would you think that Activision will go about approving patches for this game? Uh, probably not very good, right? So I think that's just common sense. That kind of well, it's not really common sense, but I think that's kind of lost in the translation of all our complaints of what's wrong with this game. And I think it's important to recognize Activision's role as a publisher. Their role as publisher of this game is to make as much money as they can. And uh, so they can either 
divide their time into making map packs that they can overcharge us with, which they will still make money on, or they can put the work to work the, the remaining Infinity Ward staff they have to patches that would not make them any money at all. So let me think about that in terms of a business model. What would you guys do if you were Activision in this point? I'm not at this point. I'm not I'm not defending Bobby Kotick in any way. I'm just saying from a business standpoint, what Activision decided to do is the correct decision. And the next topic in general I would have to say is the power of the developer in terms of their relationship with its publisher so a lot of people kind of praise Bungie for the fact that oh they have such great community service and that's true they do have great community service but they have to you have to realize that they have a lot more control of what they want to put out and the time frame in which they can put things out ever Halo game comes out basically every three years but <laughs> but Activision as the publisher pushes for at least one new Call of Duty every single year so all the bugs so the, basically there's not enough time for these developers to basically work out all the bugs and fine tune everything that's kind of imbalanced in this game or could be imbalanced in the game so once again it comes down basically down to the publisher and I'm willing to bet that if they <laughs> if they could have had it their way the leads Vincent Pella and his and his co-founder would have loved to have more time to work on this game but like I said <laughs> they're on a contract and they're with the strict budget so that's probably why there was no public beta and all the other stuff so I kinda basically led you guys to believe that um, basically I don't necessarily blame Infinity Ward for all the problems that are in this game but I think we have to basically look at the developer and the litigation that goes about making developing patches for a game or rebalancing a game it's just really defined in the relationship between those two parties and in a lot of cases I don't blame Infinity Ward okay so next topic is 402 or Robert Bowling uh, he tweeted a little while ago where he basically said he was going to change his name from creative strategist to uh, public punching bag because a lot of people blame him for what's going on so once again, you have to look at the fact that what's going on at the time, Infinity War at this time is basically in shambles. And he, you have to understand behind his job, he's a dad. He's He has a family and everything. So his role in this community is basically not to develop or put, uh, put ideas or patches towards Infinity War, but rather it's to basically ask, uh, act as a PR person. I think as a community we kind of overemphasized his role. We expected him to basically be our voices and anytime we had an issue we just relayed to him. He'd pass it through, it'd get done, lickety split basically. And I have no doubt in my mind that he actually listened to us at some points. I know on two separate occasions he recognized the fact that one man army noob tubes were were basically unbalanced and I'm sure that he and he actually put notions in to get those fixed but just because he put he puts those in doesn't mean that they're gonna get passed some way somewhere along the way the, the, the motion basically got denied and we didn't get our patch and we basically can't blame him for that we either blame the publisher who doesn't want to spend money in developing the patches or the developer at the time who basically can't do it or they just become too attached to their game to make any changes but I'm not I'm not I'm basically saying that it's, it was most likely the former rather than the latter of what actually happened and I basically blame Co Bobby Kotak for everything that's wrong with the video game industry in general and when you look at it very carefully creative strategist just means he's a PR guy his job is to promote the game and he's not a programmer at any sort so he can't physically or digitally I guess fix anything and with a new Call of Duty coming out every single year Activision could give two shits about the actual game itself uh, it's just, basically it's just a money drive so yeah as well at the end of the day he's just a dad he's a normal guy with a family that he has to provide for and feed and would put yourself in his shoes would you risk your job or something that you know for a fact if you brought up any more than you have already had you'd be 
you'd be on the chopping block with the with Vince Ampella and the rest of the Infinity Ward staff. So yeah, it's just something to think about. Uh, like I said, it's not a terrible game, although there are issues with it. Obviously, no game out there has its faults. Even in Halo Reach, there are a bunch of balancing issues right now that e that need to be addressed, such as armor abilities and other stuff like that. But if, if you look in comparison, Bungie has a lot more power over their game than Infinity War does with Activision behind its back. So yeah, like I said, at the very end of the day, it just comes down to community. Uh, the game would be awesome if everyone just said that One Man Army new tubes were, were a piece of shit and no one should use them. But it comes down to the people who are actually playing the game. And if you guys have stepped in any any sort of first person shooter lobby, you will get the assholes who will ruin it for the rest of us. And it's just a matter, it's just how it goes. But yeah, that's just my overall thoughts. Uh, I decided to have a nice topic to talk about today. No one actually out there, not many people out there actually defend Infinity Ward or Robert Bowling. So I thought it'd be a nice change and maybe I, I change some of your minds of the whole, this whole game and where it's gone or where it's gonna go. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please leave a comment of what you guys thought of my commentary and please rate the video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.